Here's a question for you. What is the biggest social media platform out right now? I'll give you a second to answer. If you said Facebook, then you are 100% correct. Not only is Facebook the biggest, but it wants to stay the biggest. Hence why it has obviously purchased companies like Instagram and WhatsApp and everything else that it has purchased because it wants to have and keep autonomy. So doesn't it make sense that as a business, you wanna make sure that on the biggest platform, out right now that not only do you have your business flourishing on that platform but you increase your engagement and speaking of engagement that of course happens to be the hardest thing possible when it comes to social media now as we all know due to the pandemic and due to lockdown and all of the many things that has happened to our world so many new businesses have now come online and so what that means is that your business in order for it to stand out you need to do a few things and the number one thing that your business needs to do is to keep up its engagement and that happens to be the most difficult thing and that is why on today's video I'm going to be teaching you my 10 top hacks for increasing your engagement on Facebook you want to make sure you watch until the end because number 10 is going to be my bonus tip which not many people know about and very few people do so make sure you watch until the end if you are a returning subscriber, massive welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, do me a wonderful favor and of course subscribe to this channel. Turn on the bell so that you will be the first to see when we publish new videos three times a week. And if it is your first time seeing me, then I'm Pamela Bassad, the founder of The Lucrative Lady. And today I'm gonna to be teaching you all about one of my favorite platforms and how you can have incredible success with higher engagement on Facebook. So let's dive in. So number one, the first hack that I'm going to give you is what a lot of us bigger marketers are doing, but not many people are telling you or teaching about. But I'm gonna tell you, even though it's a little bit hard to hear, I wanna make it my first point. But before I do, I wanna ask you a question. Have you heard of the statement, if I build it, they will come? You've probably heard about that. And that is, you know, if you create your business, your ideal clients will find you. The truth of the matter is that used to be the case years and years ago, when the Facebook algorithm would take your post out to your audience. Now, you cannot just build it and, you know, expect them to come, they won't. You have to do what I'm going to teaching you in number one, and that is to boost your post, or rather to run a very small amount of paid ads to your post. That is what most people are doing. And here is why. With over two billion people on Facebook competing for attention, guess what Facebook is going to do? Facebook is going to prioritize those who are ready to pay and play. So that means that if you're not paying for the attention, they're not going to prioritize you. Facebook has one mission, and that is to show your post to friends and family. But let's face it, who here has two billion friends and family to follow, like their stuff, and comment on their stuff, and buy their stuff? Uh, I don't, do you? So if that is the case, we've got to be ready to pay and play. That means boosting your post or running a little bit of Facebook ads. Now, if you're wondering, but Pam, do I have to start running Facebook ads right now? Let me just break it down. We do this successfully with, I'm talking $5 a day for ourselves and our clients. It's called a simple engagement post and it's one of the easiest types of posts to create for your audience. In fact, I'm going to dive behind my laptop to show you exactly how to quickly create an engagement post. Here are some reasons why engagement posts or rather boosting your content is very, very important. Number one, if you have low followers on your account, they're not going to see your post, especially if you're posting on your Facebook page, they're just not going to see it. And for this reason, when you create an engagement post, what you're doing is paying to play. So you're forcing Facebook to drive your post to your ideal clients. That is the first thing. And because so many people are vying for the same five second of attention, if you are paying for that attention, Facebook is going to prioritize you. And number two, and this is my favorite reason, when you boost your post, you attract your ideal clients. So not only do they see your content, but a lot of them will actually end up following your page, which means that in the future, they get to see more of the stuff that you create. And you know, of course, 
people, if you keep creating great content, they might then become customers, paying clients, etc. So it really pays to increase your engagement. And if you're watching this and you already know how to create an engagement post, and I've put chapters on this video so that you can skip on. But let me dive in and show you quickly how to create a really good engagement post so that you can boost your post for as little as $5 a day. So in this walkthrough, I want to show you how to set up an engagement campaign. Again, this is another type of campaign that you can use for your top of funnel ads. So we are back in Ads Manager. I go back to Create. And this time I'm going to click on Engagement. And by the way, you just click on this, right? It says to get more page likes, event responses or post reactions, comments, shares, etc. So engagement, and I'm going to click. And oops, sorry, down here it says, it gives you three options, post engagements, page likes, um, event responses. And just keep it on post engagements. So I'm gonna click on continue. And the screen looks very similar. So now we are on campaign level. So you're going to name your campaign again. So case study and US top of funnel. Oops, let's do that in capitals. Engagement and cold because you know it's it's cold. It's, it's top of funnel, so it's cold. Um, and so and the date, right? So let's do the date over here we click on next so once you've named it there's nothing to do you just click on next over here so again it looks very similar to setting up a traffic campaign just very subtle changes by default it's targeting everybody in the United Kingdom which is 53 million people you can see that here we don't want that do we so I'm not going to name my ad set because you know I need to know where I'm sending ads to so again daily budget i'm going to take it to either 10 pounds or five pounds whatever your budget is is fine the date i'm going to set it to from the next business day and i'm going to change the time so again i'm going to do uh, this time actually for my custom audience right because i'm doing it to cold i'm going to go back to my hit list so this time for my custom audience i'm not going to use any custom audience i want to show you how to run a different type uh, to, a, to a different type of audience, right? To your detailed targeting. We do need to do some exclusions, but I'm gonna come back to that later on. So let's come back to this. Let's change the country because I've already said on my campaign level that I'm targeting the US. So let me change it to United uh, States over here. And the age. So I'm going to target 30 to 65 plus and I'm going to change it to women, right? So the numbers are going down drastically over here to women. Uh, now, this is where I'm going to make the bulk of the changes for where I want Facebook to target now. So in the traffic campaign, I showed you how to target or to send an ad to your lookalike audiences. Remember, you can do that as well in your um, engagement campaign, which is what I'm doing now, or in the video views campaigns, which is what I'm going to be doing next. You can do it in any campaign. But um, for this one, I'm just going to show you how to do detailed targeting over here. So you click on edit over here. And I typed in an interest, Amy Porterfield. over here. So now it's taking me all the way down to only 210,000 uh, people, right? And that is because, uh, that is because I'm doing the United States and I'm doing 30 to 65 plus and I'm doing only women. So if I did all men and women, the size increases, but I'm keep it, gonna keep it to women. And if I change the age, Look at that. The size massively increases. Do you see that? So that means Amy Porterfield has a lot of younger people, you know, looking at her, which is brilliant, right? So, but I'm going to stick to 30 to 210, right? And women over here. So because this audience is really tiny, now if your question is, but Pam, how, you know, what's the maximum number of audience that I can have and what's the minimum? In all honesty, I try to work from anything from 100,000 to 1 million for this uh, level of budget, okay? So you wanna keep it quite small. So I'm quite happy 
with this. I'm quite happy with 210,000 because if I wanted to narrow it even further and say to Facebook, I want them to be aged between 30 to 65 plus, I want them to be women, I want them to like Amy Porterfield plus, right? I want them, I want to narrow it even, even further. I click on narrow audience over here and I go, I want them to not only like Amy Porterfield, but and they must match. So if I click here, you can see this graph over here that it says they must like Amy Porterfield and something else, which means Facebook is only going to target those who are in the middle of this. Do you see that? So if I say Amy Porterfield and they must be small business owners as a behavior or as an interest, see, as an interest, it's tiny, 33,000 people. So let's go with behavior. So now it's gone to 17,000 people. It's minuscule, right? So that is too small. You want it to be a minimum of 100,000, right? But if you wanted to increase that, right? So instead of doing narrow audience, you could just click in here and add a different audience. So you might say, I want them to like Amy Porterfield and I want them to also be using ConvertKit. Let's see if ConvertKit is in here. Okay, ConvertKit isn't here. Okay, oops. Oops, Teachable isn't there either. Thinkific. Not found. What I can do instead is on Amy Porterfield over here, or rather I'm going to type in Amy Porterfield here and click on Suggestions. So now it's showing me other people who might or might not be on my hit list, right? So I might go, actually, I want them to like Amy Porterfield and I want them to be interested in entrepreneurship because it's there. So now I've gone, I've gone, <laughs> look at that. Let's do this again so you can see. Can you see it says 24 million? That's way too big, look at that. So if I remove this, so Amy Porterfield's 210,000. The moment I added entrepreneurship, It went to 24 million, that is way too big, right? So let me do that again. Let's try a different interest, Amy Porterfield. And if I go to suggestions, let's try Female Entrepreneur Association because I don't want it to be too massive. Oh, brilliant, I love this size. 1.6 million, this is good. Two, under two million is good. Over two million, the budget is just too small, okay? So I've got here, so Amy Porterfield and I want them to uh, like Female Entrepreneur Association. So that means that Facebook has added these two categories together, making me making it a very, very broad audience. So I could say, actually, Facebook, this is too big. I want to narrow down if you want to. These are just options that I'm giving you now. I want to narrow down because I want them to also be interested in, in entrepreneurship. Remember earlier, I added entrepreneurship. Now I'm narrowing by entrepreneurship. So I'm making it smaller, right? Hence the narrow. So now it's brought it down to 1.4 million. So this is pretty good. I would actually personally target this. I, I actually love this. So what I'm saying to Facebook is I want to show my ad to women aged between 30 and 65 women. They must like Amy Porterfield. They must also like Female Entrepreneur Association and they must be interested in entrepreneurship. Facebook, how many of them in the United States are there? So Facebook is saying there are 1.4 million people, Pam. And I'm saying, brilliant, thank you. Lovely doing business with you, Facebook. So right there, 1.4 million people. Now, this number is going to change because the moment we go down, right? So this is where I was. I'm going to go down here. I still need to do my exclusions, which I haven't done, but I'm going to go down to manual placements. Don't keep it on automatic. I'm going to remove Instagram. I'm going to remove Facebook because, sorry, I'm going to remove audience insights because I'm only going to target Facebook. Look at that. It's brought it right down to 330,000 people. Because it's a small budget, I'm happy with that. If I want to target Instagram, I'm going to set up a different ad set for that, a different campaign for that. Okay? So now on Facebook, I don't want to show it to everybody on Facebook. I don't want to show it in the marketplace or the video feeds. I want to show it literally on just the news feed. So I'm going to remove all of these here. Let's see. All of these here and these here, right? So it's still 330,000 people. I'm happy with that, that's good. If I wanted to increase that number, guess what I would do? I would just remove this one, okay? So if I remove this one, it, well, it's only increased it by, by a tiny bit, 
right but this this is how you play with your numbers so that you can see how many people you are targeting right at five pounds you're not even going to cover this amount of people okay so the next thing i want to do which i didn't do is i'm going to scroll back up and add the name so now i know it's amy porterfield and i don't remember the second one. Oh yes female entrepreneur association aged 30 to 65 plus and women right so female I'm gonna put F there right so now I've named my ad set because I know what it is I'm now going to scroll down to hold on to here to audience right so if you're wondering Pam I'm lost go back to the top and scroll down to audience now I'm going to do my exclusions because I want this to show to just my cold audience I want to exclude everybody who is warm so who is warm right I'm gonna hit on exclusions over here don't type here because that would be include right we want to do exclude so we're gonna type here so now I want to in, uh, exclude everybody who is uh, who has visited my website, right? Oops. In the last 180 days, I'm also going to exclude um, people who are connected with me on Facebook because I really want this to be super cold because I'm paying for cold, right? I'm trying to make my cold people warm, so it makes no sense that I market to them at this uh, to, to, so it makes no sense that i market to my warm audience at this stage i want to market to my warm audience when i get into the middle of funnel so now i'm going to exclude my instagram so i've excluded my website visitors facebook people instagram people and now i want to exclude my email list okay now i've excluded my email list so these are my uh, my warm audiences now can you see that what has happened is Facebook has removed that number. Now I can no longer see how many people are left. This is why I leave this exclusion till last because then I know roughly I had 330,000 people. These exclusions are not going to be more than 20,000, right? Or, or 30,000. So I can estimate how many people are remaining. But if I had done this exclusion first, I wouldn't have that. I wouldn't have any data at all. It's a bug in Facebook that they haven't fixed. But it's just what happens at the moment you add your exclusions it just removes this data and i like to see that data so i leave the exclusions till last so now that i've done i'm just going to look through make sure i've done everything and it looks like i have right i'm going to go all the way to the bottom and that's it i'm going to click on next okay now it says there are two errors select an existing post on your id or create or user creative that's fine thank you facebook so again i'm in the ad here I'm going to choose my Facebook page, which it has already selected, and that's fine. It's saying use an existing post over here. So what I can do is I can click over here, and I can either use a brand new ad if I have never created an ad, or if I have created an ad in the past, I can use an existing post. So how do you create your ad? You go over here to create ad. Yeah, it's already selected. You go down here, and you click on add media. You're going to select, are you going to use an image or a video? Let's imagine I'm using an image. Facebook has brought up all the images that I have here on my account. If your account is brand new, you just click on upload and select your image and it will upload and, up and appear here. For now, I'm just simply going to select an image that was already there. So I'm going to select this one here. Click on next. Click on done. The image is going to appear here. Then you're going to add your copy here add your call to action I always use learn more for my call to action add your URL okay so depending on where you are taking people to you want them to engage you want to take people to your landing page of you know whatever it is that you're promoting so right now I want to take people to this right so this is for my challenge let's imagine that's where I'm sending people to I'm going to add that there oops this input call to action is invalid, please fix. Okay. Why? Let's try this. Ah, okay. Okay, there we go. I think there was a bug. Learn more is completely fine. Yes, it's fine. 
Oh, hold on. Why? There. Brilliant. So you've added your copy and you have added your uh, call to action over here and that's it that's all the information when it comes to an engagement that you have to do in other types of ads there's other things that you will have to do but this is different this is just an engagement campaign and this is for people to engage in your campaign so that's all you have to do so you just add your copy over here and there will be a learn more button and that's it you check that your pixel is selected which it is over there and that's it you hit publish and it's doing it's publishing three things so it's going to publish your campaign your ad set and your ad go back to ads manager this is the ad i'm going to click x so that we can see what it looks like so it says in review that means that facebook is going to check that i haven't done anything wrong i haven't broken any rules before they approve my ad and once it's approved it's going to say scheduled that's it so if i click over on campaign we can see that uh this is the campaign it's scheduled over here it's ticked even it's, the ad set is going to say scheduled, but the ad is going to say in review. And that's how you know that you've done it correctly. And then you wait. You need to give it 24 to 48 hours to get approved. And that's it. That's how you set up your engagement campaign. Hack number two. Hack number two is to promote your content organically via emails and groups. Now, in hack number one, I talked about boosting your post using paid ads. You don't just want to do that. You want to make sure that you definitely promote your content. So one of the ways that we do it is we take our content to our email list and we actually add the link to the post on the actual email. So say I have a video. So say I have this video that I'm recording right now, all about how to increase your engagement on Facebook. What I I would then do or rather what my team would do is we would create an email for our email list and should we publish this on Facebook which we will we would then grab the link to that post and add it to the email so that when people uh, read that email they are driven straight to our Facebook page to watch that video now what does that do number one it engages your audience on your email list or in your Facebook group wherever you are promoting it engages your audience there number two it shows you as the authority because you're the one doing the teaching and so therefore you stand as the authority the expert in that field number three it boosts the facebook algorithm because now you've published something and then whoosh you have an influx of people watching your content what facebook does or rather the message it sends to facebook is that your content must be special your content must be you know uh, uh, uh share worthy it must be noteworthy it must be amazing the algorithm wants to show people what it already understands and has proven is working because it wants to keep people on the platform so therefore when you have this influx of people watching your stuff or reading your post the algorithm goes aha that is great content i should show it to more people and so therefore just by the virtue of you promoting organically means that facebook takes over and does more of the promoting for you so it makes sense that not only do you boost your post but you promote organically via your email list via facebook groups especially your own groups if you own them or any other platform your website etc those are some really great places to promote organically number three that is to create engaging content now it's very easy to set up a facebook account and it's also very easy to create a facebook page in fact speaking of creating a facebook page i have an entire tutorial that shows you how to do this the right way that really boosts the algorithm for your business we're going to link it below this video in the cards and of course it is on the screen right now now speaking of uh increasing engagement it's really important that you create engaging content Content. Now, what a lot of people do is they share a lot of content that has a zero to do with their business. So they're talking about themselves or they're talking about the food that they ate or they're talking about their pet. And all of these things are great. However, if it has nothing to do with your business, it's not going to serve you. And it's going to attract, if anything, the wrong type of person. Now, on the flip side of that, a lot of people put posts that only talk about how amazing their business is and how cool it is. These types of content will not serve your business. Now, what is the solution to creating engaging content? The solution is to create content that sparks engagement, that sparks conversation because it is pertaining to the pains and problems that your ideal clients, your audience are facing. The role of your content is to then deliver 
solutions to these problems. You are actually helping people. So therefore, through your content, not only do you have to spark conversation, but you've got to deliver value. You've got to have the type of content that people start to screenshot, people start to share. People, you know, take a note and say, oh, I need to return to this page because everything that they are talking about has to do with what it is that I'm dealing with or what it is that I desire right now. That is the way to really create engaging content. So here are three things that your content needs to do. Number one, your content needs to grab people's attention and keep it there. Number two, you need to create a hook that piques their interest. It's got to, you know, do something for them. Either it's talking about their problem or it's talking about their pain or it's talking about their desire. Number three, your message needs to be authentic and relevant. This is absolutely key. And here's a bonus point for this section. You need eye-catching videos, eye-catching images, just anything that stops the scroll. Because remember when people are on Facebook, they've got their phones in their hand like I do right now, and they are literally scrolling, 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 right? So very, very important that you create something that is eye-catching, stops the scroll, and holds people's attention. Number four, spark conversation. Speaking of sparking conversation, let me ask you this. Are you a coffee or a tea person? How about this one? You receive 5k as a gift. Would you A, invest in your business or B, pay off some debt? What about this final one? Do you prefer to use Instagram or Facebook for your marketing? Now, what am I doing now? These are all questions that spark conversation. So questions are one of the most powerful ways to spark conversation and that's one of the ways to increase your engagement. Now, there are three types of questions that I use all the time and that I recommend you use to spark conversation. The first type of question is a closed question. What is a closed question? A closed question is any question that has a yes or no answer. It's like if you see somebody and you go, you know, do you like that dress? It's a closed question because the response is yes or no. So that is a closed question. The second type of question is an open question. An open question requires a little bit more of a conversation. So here is an example of an open question. What would you do if Facebook shuts down your account? That's an open question because there's no yes or no answer. You're asking somebody what they would do if something happened. And notice the type of question that I use there. That's something that I would ask my audience. So you've got to think about your own business. What type of open question would work well for your business? Now that leads me to the third type of question that you can use. And that is what's known as a simple question. Similar to the questions that I asked at the beginning of this. Would you rather drink coffee or tea? So a simple question is a question that gives them the choices. So so, you know, they don't have to think very hard. Nobody's scratching their heads trying to figure out the answer to this question. The answers are there. They just have to choose. A simple question is also like a multi-choice question. Would you rather A, B, C, or D? And all they have to do is comment A or B or C or D. Those are simple questions. So you have three types of questions right there that you can use to begin to really spark the conversation on your newsfeed. Number five, interact with your followers. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of people make, and that is that they do what I call post and dash. What does posting and dashing mean? It means that you've posted some content, people are starting to respond, but you're not there. It's like you've disappeared. That is one of the quickest ways to kill your engagement. In order for you to continue to increase engagement, you have actually got to manually go in and respond to people's comments. One of the best ways to increase your engagement is by interacting with your followers. So if you have done what I shared in the previous step, which is to spark conversation, when people respond to to your post, go back and respond to their comment. So imagine if I had said something along the lines of, what would you rather drink, tea or coffee? And someone responds and says, tea. I might then follow up with something along the lines of, what type of tea do you enjoy drinking? Or I really love herbal tea, what's your favorite type of tea? Or I could say something along the lines of, I'm really feeling organic teas these days and I'm trying to make my own. Do you make your own tea? Or do you have any recipes for making tea? But it doesn't even matter 
what you say. The truth of the matter is, or what I'm trying to say is, go back and comment on their posts. So if I had said, uh, what is your favorite platform, Instagram or Facebook? And they come in and they say Facebook. I might naturally follow up with and say something like, why Facebook? Why do you use this most for your business? Or if they said Instagram, I might say, what is it about Instagram that you think works most for your business? Either way, come back and respond to their post and follow up with uh, more comments using questions, open-ended questions, so that they can continue to respond to you. And before you know it, you have a thread of responses and comments, which gives your post something called social proof, which brings even more conversation. Number six, avoid fishing for content. Fishing for comments rather, not content. Fishing for comments is essentially when you end your post with comment below with a heart or uh, uh, if you like this hit the share button or anything like that the Facebook algorithm isn't a big fan of this because you know you're fishing for engagement and you know it frowns upon that now if you already have a big account if you already have a you know a large following on Facebook then you may be able to get away with that but if your Facebook page is still quite new and you have a small audience this is one of those things that you want to definitely avoid now what do you do in Instead. Well, what you do instead is end with a question because, you know, when you're fishing for comments, you are literally asking people to do something. So why not just tell them uh, to do something by telling them what to do in a safe way, such as using a question that sparks conversation. So that's a much, much, much better way to increase your engagement than to fish for comments. Number seven, post consistently. Post consistently. The algorithm loves any Facebook page that is bringing people to their platform. So if you have followed through all of the steps that I'm sharing and you're sparking conversation and you're incre increasing engagement, what you gotta do is ride the wave of that. So that means that you gotta post consistently because the more you post, the more those people who are engaging in your content will follow you and respond. Now that doesn't mean post five times a day you can post once a day you can post three times a week it doesn't really matter but you do have to have your own uh, posting schedule and try your best to stick to that so posting consistently means that your followers have something to look forward to they begin to expect you they know that you post on Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays they know that you're going to post something that will give them value and that will spark conversation and what happens is that when the algorithm understands your posting pattern it will literally serve your post on a platter to your followers, especially the ones that have engaged with you in the past. So don't flunk on your posting schedule, get posting and know your schedule and just stick with it. This is going to really boost your engagement. Number eight, post native content. Now I'm guilty of doing this and that is sharing some of our videos, especially from YouTube, etc., to our platforms. Now, even though this does work sometimes if your account is a little bit bigger, it's not something you want to do all the time. Why? Because Facebook's main job is to keep people on their platform. And so if the algorithm knows that you are always posting links on your page or posting anything that takes people away from their platform, guess what it's going to do? It's going to go ding to your post and it's going to kill your your reach it's going to kill the push that it would have given to your post so you've got to make sure that you are posting natively now what does that mean it means that if you have a video that perhaps you've posted on YouTube or posted on Instagram or wherever else you have shared that video upload it directly to Facebook and avoid posting or rather sharing that video from uh, you know a different platform into the Facebook platform all of these platforms are, are a little bit selfish right they're a little bit greedy and there's nothing wrong with that it's just the way it works so not only do they want to bring people to that platform but they want to keep you on their platform so the moment the algorithm knows that you're going to be sharing anything that takes people away from its platform you're a threat and so therefore they're naturally not going to give you the reach so make sure that you are uploading videos natively and you are posting natively instead of sharing things from outside of Facebook 
So I have one more point to share with you before I share my bonus point, which is uh, pretty awesome. Uh, on that note, if you haven't already subscribed and you've watched up until this point, do me a solid and make sure that you hit that subscribe and turn on your bell because it allows me to know that uh, you're enjoying this video and that it has brought you value. So that leads me to number nine. Number nine is to use video. I talked about already about posting natively to Facebook, but I haven't really talked about the power of video. I have to tell you, if there's one thing that has really moved the needle in my business, it is using video. And to be honest, I really should have made this my number one point. But the reason I didn't is because a lot of people are really afraid of using video. You know, they feel that they don't have the right equipment. You know, they're a little bit shy of being in front of the camera and all of these things. And it is because of that that I have created on this specific channel a whole bunch of videos about video marketing and even about how to use video without showing your face. So why video? Oh my goodness. Video is one of the quickest ways to grow that know, like and trust factor. Because it's one thing for somebody to read your post. It's another thing for them to hear your voice voice via audio when they can see you as well that is a million times better than everything else when I started to use video consistently it didn't even matter what Facebook was doing uh, uh, in and of itself it didn't matter because even if only five people saw that video out of those five people we could track sales we could track enrollments we could track our, our money coming into the business as a direct result of a video right compared to a post or anything like that a written post or even an audio post so I want to encourage you right now if you're scared of doing doing video I promise you it's really not that scary it's and it's not even that difficult and if your excuse is Pam I don't even have a fancy camera you don't need a fancy camera you just need your phone or any other device Device that you have it doesn't have to be super well polished it doesn't even have to be professional if you see what I'm trying to say but just by the virtue of you being your authentic self and getting in front of the camera I can promise you that you'll be miles ahead of everybody else seeking your audience's attention so get out there and start creating your videos now that leads me to number 10 which is my bonus point and my bonus point is actually to use a feature that Facebook has given us and that is to pin your post oh I love this I absolutely absolutely love this feature now let me break it down when people land on your Facebook page or your Facebook profile or even in your group the first thing that they're going to want to do is to seek out who you are they want to find out what you what you're like what your business is like now how do they do that they do that by scrolling and checking out your posts now the truth of the matter is that number one you don't even know that they're there right you wouldn't know there's no notification that says somebody has landed on your page or your profile or even in your you don't know that they're there so therefore you have no idea what it is that they are looking at what it is that they are watching unless they comment like or share that piece of content however you have something that gives you control and that is the ability to pin a post. I love this. Now why? Because a pinned post means that it is the first thing that people are going to see. When people see something that is pinned or rather when people hop on your page, they're going to look at the first post as the first thing because it is the first thing staring at them in their face. Now, why is this powerful? It's powerful because you can then choose which specific content you pin. Now, what are some content that you should definitely pin up there? Now, I prefer to pin posts that have our client testimonials, posts that show results that we get for our clients. I prefer to pin posts that have video because I know that video builds that no like and trust factor. These are the types of posts that do very, very well. And so what happens is we pin them. And the thing about a pinned post is that it doesn't actually matter how uh, long ago you posted that post. It could have been six months old. It could be a year old. It doesn't matter. As long as it's going to bring value to your audience and of course value to your business, Business, make sure that it is the post that is pinned because more than likely that is the post that people are going to look at the most so just to round up here is a quick reminder of all of the points that I shared with you for how to increase your engagement on Facebook number one boost your content with paid ads number two promote your content organically via emails Facebook groups and other platforms number three create engaging content number four get people talking spark conversation number five 
five, interact with your followers. Number six, avoid fishing for content. Number seven, post consistently. Number eight, post native content. And number nine, use videos. And number 10, which is my bonus content, and that is pin your pillar piece of content. So if you love this, show me that you love it by giving it a thumbs up, sharing this video, and of course, uh, comment below. I want to hear from you. Which of these points will you be using the most? I want to hear from you and, you know, learn a little bit more about your business. So make sure you comment below. I do respond to all of the comments. So please go ahead and share uh, with me and I will be creating more content in that direction. If you haven't already checked it out, make sure you check out this playlist that has everything to do with Facebook from how to create your Facebook page, how to run Facebook ads and everything concerning growing your business using Facebook. I'll see you in my next video.